Hey, it's Ben Surdy with Pure Dry Restoration, and there's a lot of questions floating around right now about the virus, uh, coronavirus, COVID-19. Um, and today, there's a lot of misconceptions about the proper process to protect your family, protect your business, um, as, as far as how do I disinfect properly. So today we're gonna talk about how do we disinfect properly if you were to do it by yourself, if you are to hire a third party professional, um, how to make that decision to ensure that you're not buying a product or service that may not align with the end goal that you're wanting to, to achieve. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then we'll, we'll go through our protocol and what we're doing for customers to uh, eliminate the risk or reduce the risk of being affected uh, because we care very much. As you many, many of you know, the risk of getting infected with the virus is not life-threatening to most people unless you're on the older side of the spectrum. So the risk isn't driven by fear of getting the infection. The, the issue really is the, the ripple effect and the cause and effect of if employees get infected and they're forced to stay at home, what does that do to the small business industry? And what we're seeing is a lot of small businesses are unable to financially stay afloat because they have to quarantine people and shut things down. And so this is a big deal, not just because of protecting your health and hygiene, which is highly important. It's also important to protect your neighbors, protect your community from the bigger threat of economic effect. So first we're gonna talk about um, what we do. Uh, I'm gonna walk through our protocol. So as you can see, I'm wearing a PPE suit. This is a personal protection suit. So if my company comes onto your job site, you're gonna be uh, handled by an expert that, that uh, has been trained and gone through the process that I'm about to go through with you to ensure you're getting the highest and best results. So step one is we make sure we wear PPE, so gloves, uh, personal protection suit, and of course, this is a mask. This is an N95 mask, and this is something that you'd wanna wear to prevent aerosolized particles from coming in contact uh, with you. So here's the thing, here's how people are getting infected um, with the virus. Um, they're getting infected from touch points. So what we're going to talk about really quickly is what are touch points. It's pretty common sense, but I don't want people to misunderstand what I mean. So um, an example of a touch point, one example could be a uh, light switch. A light switch, somebody flicks that on and off every day, multiple people are touching that, would definitely be a touch point. Uh, things like keyboards, phones, light switches, armrests on chairs, anything that the human body comes in contact with is a touch point and is going to be the focus of my conversation uh, during this video. So step one, and a lot of uh, misconceptions I believe that are floating around is the proper way to disinfect a surface. So, let me go ahead and erase this. The proper way to disinfect a surface is, first you must remove the biofilm. So if I have a contaminated surface, let's just use the example of spreading jelly on a surface. And, and, and in this uh, analogy, jelly is the virus. Now, if I come through with a something like, let's say Lysol or something like this, and I spray that all over the jelly, I could probably reduce, possibly eliminate uh, the, the risk or threat of that jelly. But the, the preferred method uh, by industrial hygienists is you must remove the biofilm. So that just means that I'm going to take an all-purpose cleaning agent, I'm going to spray it on the surface, uh, I'm going to take a microfiber towel and clean the surface in preparation for the next step, which is apply the disinfectant, okay? So, uh, step two is apply, apply your disinfectant. Now there's many different types of disinfectants, some of which have been approved by the EPA as confirming a kill rate with this virus, some of which are not. Some of them carry heavier health risks um, in their health ratings with the SDS sheets, safety data sheets. Uh, some of them are safer. So uh, at, at our company, we use a safe alternative to bleach that's 100 times safer than bleach, uh, but equally as effective at killing the virus uh, because we believe that if we're going to be going through and spraying your home, 
uh, with an electrostatic spraying system, if we were to use bleach, probably cause some issues, not healthy to breathe in, uh, aggressive off-gassing, the bleach stays on the surface of the, of the material and can absorb into your bloodstream through that. So I'm not a huge fan of bleach personally. Um, so we use a safe alternative at our company. Um, but that would be the next step is that you apply the disinfectant. Now, I'm gonna talk about how to apply the disinfectant. Number one, you could use a trigger sprayer. You could spray the surface, let it sit for 10 seconds and then wipe the surface off. Or what we choose to use is an electrostatic spraying system. So in this uh, screenshot, hopefully you can see, this is a professional electrostatic spray system that when I turn this on and I pull this trigger, what it's doing is sending an electrically charged moisture molecule through the air um, and that positively ch uh, charged ion is going to adhere to surfaces much more effectively than if I just sprayed it out of a trigger sprayer. More importantly, an electrostatic sprayer is creating a much smaller droplet size, so therefore I can have way more coverage and way more effectiveness with my disinfection protocol. So it's important to apply disinfectant, but I think it's more important to know how to apply disinfectant and make sure that the disinfectant is giving you full coverage to the room and that you're not risking missing different areas. So the next step is we want to make sure that we've actually reached a kill count, meaning that we need to probably test that surface to ensure that what I just did, removing the biofilm and applying the disinfectant, reached the goal, which is eliminating the bacteria and the viruses that would be on that surface. So <clears throat> At our company, we're gonna use an ATP system. And an ATP meter is going to swab the surface. You stick it in this machine that we use and it'll tell you the amount of bacteria uh, on that surface and confirm whether or not you've officially disinfected the surface or not. Uh, so that's, a, that's an important uh, next step. So the fourth step, and this is what a lot of companies are not doing, and I think this is the most important part of the process. I can go through and remove the biofilm. I can apply a disinfectant and I can confirm that I've disinfected the surface. However, if this was the surface that I was disinfecting and I had another person come into the room and that person happened to cough, I've immediately reinfected the surface and that can compromise the entire purpose of all the work I just put in. So what's the solution? So the solution is applying a bacteria barrier a bacteria barrier so this bacteria barrier uh, has a saline solution built into it so what its ability to do if I were to apply it to this hard surface uh, it has the ability to uh, remain on that surface for a period of up to 30 days so that anytime if somebody were to come cough and potentially get the virus on the surface I've treated it will kill the virus uh, before it was able to make its way onto the surface. So think about it like a bed of nails and a balloon is the virus. The balloon lands on the bed of nails, pop, goes the balloon. So in that analogy, the virus lands on the surface by coughing, by aerosolized particles, by bodily fluids, whatever the transmission occurred. Once it hits the surface that we've treated with our proprietary solution, no more virus on the surface. So the next thing that I want to talk about is a lot of people are focused on the, uh, excuse me, let me stand over here. A lot of people are focused on the surface itself. We know that people are getting infected by cross-contaminating surfaces, touching a surface, touching their mouth. And so touch points is a critical point of focus. The other point of focus and the other way people are tr uh, transferring the virus to one another is through air, aerosolized particles, aerosolized viruses, they're airborne. If I cough into the air and somebody walks into that pan, uh, channel of path, they're going to breathe in uh, that virus and they're going to breathe it into their lungs. It'll get into their bodily fluids and there, there goes the virus. So the question is, how do you treat the air? Now there's two ways. Number one, as I stated, the electrostatic spring system, I have the ability to cover every cubic square inch in this room to ensure that I've gotten full coverage. 
However, that's not the only tool in our belt. So I'm going to show you guys one other system here. And this is called a hydroxyl machine. Uh, hydroxyl machine is a safe alternative to ozone because as you know, an ozone machine is not safe for a human being to be in the room during the treatment. So a hydroxyl machine is the safe alternative. What we've confirmed is that this machine has a 99.99% .99 kill rate for the virus, for coronavirus. So the way that it works is you plug this in, you hook a fan up to it, and it will run in that room. Now as it goes into the room, it's oxidizing the airborne virus or bacteria, therefore eliminating it and rendering it harmless to the human being. So this is also part of our protocol. If we were to come into your home or your building, we're gonna be removing biofilm from touch points, we're gonna to be applying disinfectants that are safe alternative to bleach, but more effective. We're going to be testing the surfaces that we are cleaning and disinfecting. We're going to be applying a bacterial barrier to your touch points to provide up to 30 days of protection. And then we're going to focus on the actual air in your home to ensure that the air itself is clean. So that would be step five, is treat the air, okay? So as you go through this protocol, you're gonna see a lot of companies that maybe are skipping some of these steps. And so I think it's important for people, choose who you want to choose, choose the provider of your choice, but understand and have the knowledge to make an educated decision and ensure that you're not being left out of options that you would have been like to uh, have been available to you. Because as you can see, as I've gone through these steps, you probably agree these are all very important steps and that you wouldn't want to miss it. So um, now I want to address something. Here's what a lot of people are saying. Uh, let me move this cord. What a lot of people are saying is I will wait until I get infected before I take action. I will wait until one of my employees gets confirmation of the virus. I will wait until there is a, a positive, uh, or in this example, a negative reaction that occurs. I wanna really, really challenge that decision making. I wanna challenge that way of thinking. The goal here is to prevent a mass spread, okay? So I think it's your duty, it's your obligation, and it's your responsibility to protect your employees, to protect your family, to prevent getting exposed to the virus. The, you cannot be reactive here. You've gotta be proactive in your solution. You know, it's like getting car insurance after you just totaled your car. You've gotta make sure you've got insurance so that if your car is totaled, that there's solutions in place. This is the solution. This is your insurance policy to protect you, protect your family, and pr uh, protect your employees. Sending, sending your employee home for several weeks because they've been infected could negatively impact their financial exposure to not being able to pay their mortgage, not being able to put food on the table. So this is not a situation where let's wait till we're infected. This is let's take action now. So if you're looking to hire a disinfection company and you're uh, wanting to take action right now, I encourage you to call me. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, walk through the unique circumstances of your job, uh, the clientele that you deal with or your home and how you want to approach that. Um, so please call us. Uh, our phone number is 206-353-4155. Um, and we will be doing a Facebook Live video most likely to be able to provide a platform for people to ask questions openly and freely. Um, so uh, I look forward to serving you, protecting the community, and uh, as always, uh, our goal is to have a happy, healthy home. So call the healthy home experts at uh, Pure Clean and Pure Dry Restoration.